Hey guys, my name is Nick, I'm a Microsoft Certified Expert Administrator. I create a lot of content for MSPs. Today's video is around the February 2021 updates from Microsoft. If you've watched my previous update videos, you know I keep these consolidated towards the SMB market and what is relevant for MSPs. I'm trying to take out all the noise from Microsoft and the enterprise SKUs that they offer, as well as be a little bit more proactive with the updates that are coming so that we can make documentation and also handle support requests to increase our mean time to resolution on those from our clients as well. Ultimately, because Microsoft changes this so often, we just want to get ahead of things there. So getting into it here, I want to start always with Microsoft Teams because that's where Microsoft's spending the most money as far as development work. And this first one here, they are extending the permission sets and security controls that exist today within SharePoint. And they are making that part of the file sharing experience within Teams. This has been there to some degree today, but not to the extent where you would be setting the default link option for when you share a document and things of that nature. So in this particular sense, they have been getting messages today, allowing them to, to do certain controls with sharing things in chat messages. But this will take it a step further to encompass all of your SharePoint hardening settings. And it will also take into effect if the user that they're sharing with does not actually have existing permissions, it'll give them a little notice saying, you need to change these if you wanna share this with this person or not. And there may be some global settings you've set as the admin, which doesn't allow them to do so. So be aware of that. It'll, it'll basically inherit your SharePoint admin settings. So you may wanna take a look at those and assess that within your organization. The timeline for this is mid-March through mid-April. Or rollout. The next one here, this Get Meeting Now link in Teams. This is something where if you go to meet now with an existing person, you can actually get a link to share out. Maybe you want to give them your bridge in the sense of having a meeting at a later time, or you want to share with multiple people and have that in the chat for everybody to, to be able to click on, or you're saying you're doing it at a later point in time again in that particular sense. You'll be able to share these out and that already may be in some of the existing tenants as a possibility but will be complete by mid-march this next one here i think is a higher concern for admins they're changing the way in which the team's environments are discoverable within the particular facets of the office suite so up to this point in time everything is acted like a team channel was also a group and if you're familiar with the entire architecture, most Teams channels can be created off of 365 groups and are associated as so. But now they're changing it so that if you create a team in the Teams Admin Center, it's not actually gonna be looking at it like it's a group, so it won't be discoverable in the Outlook address book. It won't be able to be shown as a group if you're searching for it in other locations as well. So this may be something that you want to evaluate with your customers and update documentation on or choose a path in which you always create a 365 group first and then make a team channel off of that. Otherwise, the emails and configuration of it um, as far as the scheduling of, of calendar events and all the things you see here in the bullet list won't be applicable. And this is taking effect on March 15th. So after that day, if you start creating Teams admin or Teams channels in the admin center, they won't be able to be searched within Outlook. That might not be a big deal to some of you, but I would just take note of that because it could be a problem where your customers are reaching out saying they can't find this particular Teams group in Outlook, for instance. The other one here is shared Teams from Outlook. This is a cooler one, I think, but it can, can be controlled with PowerShell commandlets that'll be coming out soon in the sense of giving users the ability to do this. This is basically a plugin that's configured after this time frame passes in mid-March here, and it does allow them to, to share out the particular message and attachments in the Teams channels or chats that they want to as well. If they're shared in a particular Teams cha channel, they actually are created as a copy of the email and the attachments and copies are stored in the email messages subfolder within the SharePoint for that Teams channel. So just take note of that if you're thinking about email storage and concerns potentially on that front in the sense of DOP and, and things of that nature. So the add-in will actually be installed the first time the user uses the Teams web or desktop client after that capability has been rolled out. And again, you can control the functionality and users being able to do this with PowerShell commandlets that 
will be out soon, apparently, according to Microsoft. They haven't been published yet, though. Um, the next one here, Teams registration page for meetings. Uh, this is where an organizer can come in and actually set a registration for a Teams event that they might want to hold. And it allows the users who are invited to receive an email with a registration link. And not everybody then has to go ahead and schedule this. Could be a webinar you want to host or something where somebody needs to register in this particular fashion. It's not necessarily the biggest deal in my opinion. You could just set a particular meeting with the invitees, but this is a, a different use case where you may want to just be using this for a webinar platform. But this is something you can change in the sense of the policies as well to within the Teams Admin Center if you don't want people to be able to, to do this or send this registration page out to end users. The next one here is an end of life announcement in regards to the first line worker and first line manager policies being retired in efforts for the front line worker, front line manager policy packages. Just take a note of that, that's taking place March 15th. If you want to switch over to those other packages if you do not have them set up already. Next, shifting here into Exchange and Outlook. We're gonna start with OWA, and this is just a minor UI update, but they're publishing the links to all the Office Suite within OWA environment on the left-hand toolbar, as you see in the screenshot. So not the, anything I think that you need to notify your end users about, but it's just good to know that that will be changing and being updated there in that particular view. And this will begin early March and will be complete by the end of March. Next one, they are including reactions. If you're familiar with reactions in Teams, they're extending this into Outlook messages. It's only gonna be supported in internal environments at this point in time, as in within your own tenant. You can't go ahead and like or heart an outside message. The environment will send you these summaries of what's been liked and things like that for you to consume but they will have the notifications there on the actual on the actual emails that are coming through. And this will be starting in the beginning of March. The next one here, if you're familiar with the anti-phishing policies within Microsoft Security and Compliance Center there, they're shifting the ability to have the policy set to move to the junk email folder. It's automatically going to default to the quarantine message option. Microsoft is making this change because they determine the probability of an end user clicking on a link in a high confidence phishing email is 30 times greater when the email is in the junk folder than when it's in the quarantine. So making this move across the board is a best practice. And that'll begin at March of 2021 and go through mid-March of 2021. So if you do have this policy set up, and people are wondering if you've been, been instructing them to go to the junk folder, if it's something that they have thinking that it's a false positive, it'll now be in the quarantine and you as the admin would have to release it from quarantine as well. So just keep that in mind if you do have those policies set up. Basic Auth and Exchange Online, um, if you guys have been privy to these announcements, they ended the support for legacy authentication back in October, I believe of 2020. And so with this, they're going through all these tenants now and they are disabling Basic Auth protocols that aren't being used necessarily right now. So these may be a legacy line of business applications that are still present, but they're not seeing any of that activity in the audit log section of the Microsoft portal. So they're gonna give you a message in the notification center or in the message center, I should say, within 365. And this is including now MAPI, RPC, and offline address book in the protocols. So you'll then have 30 days to take action if it's something that you know, they're, they're shutting off in that particular case. The next one here, if you're familiar with these reports uh, within the Security Compliance Center, these are going away. Maybe something that you never actually used before, but the top centers and recipient report and also the get URL trace report are being retired. So they want you to use the threat protection status report in the sense of replacing the top centers and recipient report and the utilization of the URL protection report, which is with Microsoft Defender for the Office 365, previously known as Advanced Threat Protection ATP. So all those are, are being retired and that will happen on March 6th in these particular cases for these two reports. And early March is what they say for the, the URL protection, so roughly about the same time frame in that sense. 
The next one here too is another end user impact change where they are removing the ability to share directly in Outlook as far as a link goes for documentation. And this is including OneDrive and SharePoint. If you're familiar with this, you know what this is in the sense of being able to share directly to Outlook. They're encouraging you to just simply use a link and, and identify the recipients from there. You may want to be proactive on if you know that there's end users who are doing this. Some OneDrive updates here as well. The OneDrive Sync client will now support DWG file version history, which I think is cool if you have CAD customers, CAD files, that's what DWG is. And so if you have architects and things like that, there may have been issues in the past with having version control on these particular files. Now that is going to be ported and could already be in your tenant based off the time of this video um, because of the timelines they've driven there. The next one there is also the fact that they are rolling up the OneDrive admin center settings into SharePoint to have a streamlined seamless pane of glass, I guess, for both controls. In the first phase, they're adding the OneDrive sync storage and notification settings to the setting page within SharePoint. And in the second phase, they'll add a link from the OneDrive Admin Center to the Converge SharePoint Admin Center. And they will also be adding a banner in the OneDrive Admin Center announcing the new access point. And so these things will be going out over the time here in March and this will happen in all tenants by most likely the late March timeframe as well. So you'll start to see that. Final one here is kind of exciting if you have been tracking Universal Print. Universal Print is Microsoft cloud printing service and it removes the need for on-premises print servers, it enables workplace join Windows 10 endpoints, um, so this is basically giving you the ability to not have to install any additional client software and it's coming as part of the following offerings you see in that list. Microsoft Business Premium is most notable for the SMB space so that you can start to do this without having to spin up an on-prem server or think about how you're going to use a third-party solution potentially like Printix I think is the popular one that people use. It's still a great solution but this is one that'll actually come paid or part of your licensing and that'll happen in early March here. So that's everything I wanted to showcase for you guys in this video. Like I said, I'll attach a PDF down below here that reflects all these changes as well with more detail for all of you to have. If you do have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, like or subscribe if you guys want to see more content around Microsoft 365 and the MSP space. Thanks guys, have a great day.